Hey guys, what's going on? This is David Chen. We're another edition of Panama's Podcast, New York League's number one podcast. And today we have one of my closest friends, Del yeah. Moss. What's up, brother? How yeah, you doing? Hey, now, first off, I had a great fucking week with you. Yeah, it was I fun. mean, you you were amazing. <clears throat> we were very very gracious. Del hosted us, had us go to these amazing events. Now we even saw Martha Stewart. Hey, Martha is good. My voice is a little like raspy because uh, you know a uh, full week in Vegas, but that that was definitely one of the highlights. Got to golf with Mar uh, Martha, and she's so sweet and so down and chill. Yeah, Martha is definitely an icon. You see her, yeah. she was super sweet, super nice, mm -hmm. taking photos. That was crazy. You had Shaq, you know, your boy Johnny Damon, right? Johnny yeah, yeah. is amazing. He's a good cat. Things like that. But, man, it was so crazy to see you in your element mm -hmm. and going with you. You know, we've we, we done events together. We've hung out together. But to see you in a level like that with your ultras and – and the things that you push out, man, that was like another level. Yeah, I feel like socially, uh, on social media, I don't always share right. my life uh, too in detail. I, I've got a lot of really great relationships. I feel like that's my gift is the connection with human beings. And I'm genu genuinely curious and interested about other people's stories. And I like to have fun. Um, so it, it's really cool when I can bring someone into my world and they can see the real relationships right that I have, um, also even just how I operate in a setting like that. And for me, experiences is, is really special because, um, you know, you get to see and interact with people in um, a great setting, but you break down a lot of the barriers and you can really get down to the human connection there. <clears throat> I, yeah, I, I love the human connection side of it. I think like, that's so pivotal because without that, there really is no real connection and real no ability to do anything that's there, right? Yeah. When you were there, like, you know, we have the other celebrities and their friends. What I noticed that was particularly amazing was the amount of warmth that you provided, not just a celebrity, but fucking everybody, yeah. man. And, and this is, we talk about this as friends because, you know, yep. we do it all the time. But, like, I don't think people realize the amount of, you were talking to every single person, being nice. I mean, I saw you do it to the bartender because you know I noticed everything, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. People walk in, you don't even know I noticed yeah, that. Yeah. Everything. To me, that was so much more amazing character, right? Mm -hmm. Because you take time to say hi to everybody. What did you learn such great standards as a man, yeah. despite how crazy this world is? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's so important to take time with people. Um, also, my dad and my parents raised me to be a servant leader. Um, small town, Midwest, uh, mom's, mom was disowned because of biracial marriage. So I was in a very segregated, isolated area where I was judged my entire life. Um, and that really happened all the way up probably till I went to New York. I still get it from time to time. But um, I I know how important it is to make someone feel seen, right. make them feel understood, and for them to know that they matter. And that's how I approach each and every person. It doesn't matter if it's Shaq. It doesn't matter if it's a bartender. Um, I, I believe that I'm no better than anyone in any setting. We have different lives and different um, experiences. But um, we're people. And again, I, I find so much joy in bringing other people joy. And I, I know there's a lot of times that I haven't always had the most joy. Uh, even like January for me, I, I resonate at a very high level. Right. You know, I don't suffer from depression and all those things. I've worked on my mental health very, very diligently. Um, but January was one of the lowest months I have had in I feel like damn near my life, right, you know? Right, right, right. And I couldn't put my finger on it. Um, and this weekend was really special to me because I knew I was getting back around my people, you know, in elements that were going to bring some excitement, but I could actually, um, have fun, but bring other people joy. And that, I, that's something that helped me out of it quite a bit. Um, because I get so tunnel vision on certain things and isolate and I gotta, you know, produce, I want to, you know, get to the top. I want to have success in this, but sometimes you bring yourself up for air and you're looking around and you're like, where am I? What am yeah. I doing? Yeah. And, uh, I think that's something that I, uh, I felt a lot in January. Also, um, the environments I was in just, uh, they weren't as uplifting and po positive as traditionally. And I don't right. know if that's just because last year for so many people, it was just rough with everything yeah. you see in the yeah. media and the news. But yeah, I, I remember, you know, <clears throat> we had the conversations obviously, yep. right. And like, you know, I think about this all the time. Like, people who have so much love and infamy went through some fucking shit. Yeah. Like, we went through hell that we will never say out loud. Yep. And the more loving you to someone, 
the more hurt, like you and I know that person was. So mm-hmm. me and you are super lovely, but man, we got screwed every which possible oh, man, way. Right? Every way. And trust is actually hard. A very difficult thing for me. Um, I am open about myself. I will, and I also can be so open because from my life experience, I know that I can handle anything. Right. And um, but I've also seen the closest people uh, in my life turn, or um, you know, I've also seen that when stakes are really high um yeah. character changes and i it's something i'm always mindful of but i will say because of the challenges and things that i've gone through in life i do know that no matter what is thrown at me like god will never put more on my shoulders than i can handle amen to that you know <clears throat> it, it's interesting because we talk about this and energy and things that happen in our faith and being servants of a greater power and a greater source you almost like when you're at such a high frequency, you try to ignore all the bad things. You don't mm-hmm. let it in your circle. You keep running, you keep running, you keep running. And then when life happens, I remember we had this conversation. I was like, we just need our mighty ducks. Yeah. Right? Remember I, told yeah. You? I was like, the you environment just, is that's so, it. And your crew is so important. It's so important. And I, I, I am very grateful because uh, we talk about that all the time. Yeah. And I spend a lot of time by myself as well, even though I'm in social interactions. But then when I'm traveling, when I'm just on the grind, and sometimes that's very difficult for me because I am a sh- I'm extremely cognizant of my environment. Right. I don't have a lot of negativity and stuff around me, um, you know. And if I get in a mode where, you know, I'm 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 really low, and then I'm surrounded by like some off frequencies, right. it really really affects me because I'm not meant to like operate at this level you can't by right? nature i have a light i have you know a high spirit um i'm a happy individual so i also get energy and momentum from the people around me mm-hmm. and that's why i work so hard to not only interact and build great friendships and treat people with love and respect but that's also why i have to be so conscious of who's around me because just like when you're feeling your your body um what you hear and what you see is the same thing, you know, that's like health or it can be poison. So, yeah. um, your circle and your crew is so vital. Yeah, it, it, it's crazy, man. So you know, you hear that when you're younger. Yeah. And you're like, Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And then as you get older, I almost started realizing guys who play team sports. We just missed the team. Yeah. It's, it, that's, that's it. We just missed yep. the team. Yeah. Yeah. And Isn't that weird how that works though? Well, and as we get older, it's harder to find that it's, it? and it's really hard to find that consistently. Um, I feel like industry in New York and life has, um, been very good to me from the standpoint that I can, uh, interact and be in those circles. Right. Um, I'm 35, you know, sh- uh, showing my age a little bit. <laughs> I said but, shit uh, too, man, but we could. You're so time younger flies. Than me. <laughs> But, uh, you know, all things considered, I'll have that ability till damn near the day I die, unless I just, you know, choose to be on the beach with my wife and uh, relax. But um, I, it, it's been something that's helped me through a lot of things indirectly, just having a great circle. I, I feel like, you know, when you talk about these levels and, and staying consistent and being around, you can almost see these circles will either accelerate you mm-hmm. fully yeah or accelerate you to partial and then destroy you in yep. the middle of it that scares me yeah because guys from small towns like us who went through a lot of other traumas to then come into this world mm-hmm. and see how quickly people flip yeah as if you were nothing like none of those conversations meant anything like none of that matters yeah how do you like how do you maintain your mental health when that happens to continue to move on and just be the man that you are i i, I was n- never someone who was like starstruck or really like, I like experience cause I think it's cool. But my, my dad would always say there's never a room you'll walk into that you're not meant to be in. And, um, I was used to being picked apart because of the color of my skin. Right. Um, or, you know, not allowed to go into places as a kid because I was black and right. they thought I'd be a bad influence on their, their, their kids. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. It's Stupid wild. shit, right? I want to talk about this in a second. We're it's gonna talk wild. about it. That's crazy to me, man. But, um, as things kind of came up in life, like, when I roll somewhere, I, there's new experiences. I, I say often ignorance is bliss. I'm not ignorant, but it's like I go up in there and I'm there just to be myself, have fun, interact. Like when I first moved to New York, I'd never been to a premiere, anything. I was out there for a weekend and uh, one my agent's like, hey, I'm going to this Outlander premiere. 
you want to go you want to go to it i was like sure yeah it's a, a, a new series I'm, I'm down and um it's actually at uh you know the met it's a red carpet that's like yeah you know 60 feet every camera and i was like holy shit right that's it All this right. is cool but i'm also walking on the red carpet and like i'm at the event and i'm like I don't know who half the people are. And then someone's like, oh my God, you know, that's like yeah, Ralph, yeah. Uh, Loren and yeah. like such and such and such. I was like, oh, cool. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> I didn't right, know right, that, but right, right. Um, I, I know his clothes, but that was the first time I had met him. So it was, that's just how I've approached it. And I've also had people bring me into those circles who are certified. Um, so when I meet someone, they know I'm part of that that crew. And it's like, all right, like I think a lot of those barriers are broken down because yep. I, don't, I don't need or want anything from anyone right. um but if i'm you know we're having an interaction in the simplest way i just want to know about you that's it. It, it it's crazy because people ask me if you're this nice and you're really this nice yeah. this is really who he is like i, mean, I, am, I, I say I this to everybody because i'm like we go through our list of clients i'll be like <clears throat> i get to dell and i'm like man that guy's the nicest mother do i say this all the time in camera yeah. the nicest dude in the world best dude but then it makes people love you so much. Like our team is like, yo, what, what can we do for Dell today? And I see them work harder for you because you're nice. Yeah. And right. Not that they're not, they don't work harder for no other guys, but like we want to help the guys that are really nice and our friends and we want to help grow and make it work. And that's a transition that you've seen. The other thing I've, I've always like, I, I've seen this a lot. I don't see this often in a lot of people. I do with you. And I'm going to say this on camera is dog, you treat everyone with respect. And I, and I also say women like, yeah, yeah. I have never seen. Okay, I'm gonna say this out loud to you, but I'm gonna say this. I've never <laughs> seen the amount of women look at you and walk by as if you parted the Red Seas. <laughs> and as your friend who's walking next to you looking at this, I'm like, they definitely like, look at this. they think I'm his bodyguard. Yeah. They're walking around doing this yeah. thing. But you're so nice. You don't take advantage. You're not mean. You're not rude. You don't act like a jerk. You don't act like a douchebag. Yeah. Dog, I mean, come on, man. Like, we, 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 you know, to do that with such a high level of integrity. First off, your mama did definitely treat you right. So yeah. shout out to your mama, man. Yeah, that's my But as place. a man to another man, yeah. dog, I respect that a hundred times more. Yeah, it's just never been that big to me. It's funny because my friends would call me asexual sometimes <laughs> um, uh, when I was single. And uh, I, I love people. I have a lot of uh, female friends that um, never and nothing's ever happened. I have four sisters. I'm the only boy. You know, my dad was pretty wild when he, uh, we were younger. So my mom had to deal with a lot of the things that, um, you know, his addictions and, you know, sometimes infidelities and things like that. Um, and for me, I was baby Dale. So I was picking up a lot of those pieces at home. And I, I know that I never wanted, um, to, uh, to, to have my partner or someone go through those things. Mm -hmm. But I also saw, this at a young age too, um, and I was too young to understand the environments, but I, even in my own relationships, I, I had um, people I was seeing kind of flip on me because of race or their parents didn't like the fact that they were with you know, a, a, a black boyfriend. Yeah. And I saw their mannerisms and things change. I saw um, a lot of times how people would judge my family and like take it out on me. So I had this weird, um, belief for the longest that like the only people I could really trust uh, were my sisters and my mom. Right. And I saw it in the league and I'm not saying this is like blanket statement, but I saw friends get caught up and it, I was terrified of it because I never wanted to be in a situation where I was stuck or caught up with someone I didn't want to be with um, or accused of doing something I didn't right. do. Um, and also I will say in the most, um, Probably the biggest way of all this, though, like I'm a caretaker, you right. know, I, I'm very independent, uh, but I love um, warmth. I love to give people warmth and things like that. So uh, I don't know. I just and I, I want to invest my time in something that's real. Right. And I've heard this numerous times um, where people are like, damn, like when you say something, you're about your word, you show up in a way I've never experienced. Um, and the reason I am able to do that is because that's what I need and want in return out right. of a relationship, right? Um, I do that in my friendships. And uh, yeah, so I don't know. It, like, I'm not out in the streets trying to... No, uh, you're not. You're really not. And, yeah. and, and, and it's a real testament because you're really not. 
Yeah. You know, it's, it's time, man. Like I, I just like with you and friends, if I'm going to invest my time, I want to invest my time and give you as much of me as possible. Absolutely. And, um, you know, I know that those things are there. I was in the modeling industry with the top agency and one of their top models for like years and years and right. years and years and right. years. Um, you know, it's just there. Like those are the homies. I don't, I don't need uh, all the extra. I, I, you know, we, we talk about this childhood thing. You know, obviously I'm Asian. Yeah. I mean, fucking, I, you know, I dealt with it. I still deal with it, right? Race is a big thing. Like, I, Dude, I thought, crazy, I thought dude. You, you were from Jamaica. Well, I, I am partially from Jamaica. <laughs> I'm a universal man. A man you of know, the but, universe. But even now, like, you and Katie, right? We've been together 15 years. Like, people don't think we're together because of race. Yeah. They like, think that I'm the bodyguard. Yep. Or if we're together, then I must be super rich because there's no way that she would date an Asian man or Asian around the bottom total pool. Yeah, facts. That shit drives me nuts. But growing up, it was like, it almost felt like, like God, what is wrong with my eyes? Mm -hmm. What is wrong with me? Yeah. Why do I look like this? What? Why? Why? Why couldn't I just be normal? Uh -huh. Remember that shit? Yeah, yeah. And it would fuck with you, and it would destroy your confidence. And here's the part that I we don't talk. Like you know, my father's had those issues too. Then you look towards that man, and he's almost causing all the pain. Yeah. And then you're pissed. Yeah. Then you're angry. Then you have to find compassion and love. Then you have to figure out the balance when all you and I wanted was just a fucking hug and someone to tell us how to do it right. That's, yeah. a, that's all this was, right? But you found it. Yeah, I mean, like, growing up for me, I because we were judged so much as a family collectively, uh, and I had this idea, like, my mom chose my dad and us kids and a life over her family because uh, she didn't believe um, their beliefs crazy, were right. Man. And I always held on to, I know what we have because regardless of like things that my parents went through and some of the struggles with my dad we were raised right amazing our home was more home than like my parents were more of parental figures to my friends than their parents were even were in a lot of instances um and yeah i mean being judged that's why i only i dated someone for long periods of time and that that was it but like it's yeah, you hear it all, bro. I mean, even now, like people think I I have a certain certain flavor of woman that uh, you know, but I've dated Indian, Asian, um, you know, Hispanic, whatever. Yeah, good so human being. I'm attracted uh, attracted to someone with drive, um, someone who's who's got some grit, obviously honesty, um, and I just need to know that like uh, someone's capable of looking at a relationship like with two people, right? Because every decision you make. Um, reflects on your partner and vice versa. So, um, yeah, and I, I, I've been fortunate to, to find those things. Dude, it's crazy, man. Like, being with Katie so long now, dude, our relationship has changed from the beginning to the middle to the end to where mm -hmm. we are to just understanding each other. You know, I tell people, there's a lot of people who have 15-year relationships. Yeah. I, I've just realized, like, like, we're both big anonymy. And I remember the big thing that mattered to me was I remember we were, when we first started, it was like, you do the dishes, I'll throw out the garbage, and it was set, kind of like roommates and shit. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. You do that. And then, what, and then like, then you start, so you miss, right? Like, I'll miss a wash day or shit. Yeah, and then, yeah. then it's like, hey, and then it becomes bickery because, like, well, fuck, I had a long day. Like, and then something clicked. And I just, and we realized it was like, dude, we just both wash the fucking dishes. So we just hang out with each other. We're both tired. Like, yeah, yeah. We, we'll, we'll just do it together, get it out so we can hang out for four or five hours because we just want to hang out with each other at the end of the day. Right? Yeah. That, we're upset because we're so busy, we only get one hour to each other too. So then everyone wants to do that. I remember thinking about that because that to me was almost like a significant sign of, and I remember being made, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you out, Frank. My brother-in-law goes, uh -oh. he goes, man, you're being such a, yeah. you're washing the dish, you know, the, the, the shit that, that dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> it's some dishes, bro. Dog, the dish. It's I look dishes. Over and I go, I go, I'm teaching your daughter because of my, my niece, how a man should treat her. And he was just like dead ass silent because he didn't know what to say to yeah, that, right? Because yeah. They don't necessarily see that environment or have the, I would, I would really say the God-given gift to really think about yeah. things in a very compassionate way because there's no other way to think about it. I don't even know how we got that. We just got it, man. Yeah, I think. That's crazy. The, the traditional way of, like, even every relationship is unique. Um, I think, again, I, I go back to, I've always been servant leader, I right. think to do selfless acts for someone else, even your partner, have more, a little more patience. It takes a lot because you have to say it's not just about right. me. 
It's about you. It's about we. How can I make your day better? And um, I think that's important. And you have to work at that throughout an entire relationship consistently because things change. Um, you know, I know f for me, um, I, like I'm on the road a lot um, in my relationships. There's no denying that there's going to be distance. You know, I don't get a lot, spend a lot of time with my partners. So I am very present with them. And for me, that works and that's important. Um, I also think the small things when you're apart matter because um, it takes a conscious effort and you have to like work at it. And I know that I need to be better at some of those things as well. Um, and then the patience aspect, like I used to be really bad with comparative like sh uh, suffering right? Um, because I go, well, dude, if you only knew what happened in my life right. or this is going on and you're like, this is the problem. Like I, I, I can't, you know, I, I like check out, you know, because, um, but I've learned, and as I've gotten older, I've gotten a lot better at understanding, um, you know, pain is pain and trying to understand exactly where it's coming from. It's helped me a lot. And it's also allowed me to have some more patience and, you know, sometimes do the things that are, are a little bit more uncomfortable knowing that, um, you know, my perspective and situation isn't, uh, always the ultimate or right. And a lot of times if you are comparing and not looking at like, how can we be solution oriented? That's where resentment builds. You know, I love that you were, you talk about that, man, because being comparative and being more about your partner is what I feel like a servant leader does. You give, you don't compare, you give wholeheartedly, and you can serve in a way that that person will acknowledge and go from there. The one thing I talked, I love that you did the comparative. The other thing I think you haven't talked about, I know that you do, that I do is your ability to forgive and not make it a big deal and move on. Yeah. Right? The ability to not dwell in negativity, but have a growth mindset. Talk to me about that. One. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm probably too good at compartmentalizing things. Um, and that's just because of trauma in life. Like I've had to prepare to lose everyone in my life before yeah. high school, you know, um, whether my mom, my sisters, you know, two of my sisters um, had to go to the foster care system. It wasn't their fault. It, we couldn't do anything about it. Um, and uh, I had to always learn how to kind of operate um, and not slow down. Now, as I've gotten older, I've understood like it's, it's I don't want to bury and suppress all the good things along right. with it right. uh, because they'll come back and get you. But um, the world keeps moving. I, I also know that like for me, um, I can't sit in a loop of stress and anxiety because I know that it, it, like it, it doesn't serve me. It doesn't, it doesn't do anything because you can shift or pivot like life changes pretty quickly right. and we've got a lot more control over things. And you're like, if you're so, if you're in that grief mode or that cycle, and I was saying January was a tough one for me, which is uh, uncharacteristic, but you, all you can see is like right here. That's it. Tunnel vision. Everything else going on in front of you, mm -hmm. like you miss. And that's why journaling has been really, really good for me because I'm so good at burying and moving past the stressful stuff that sometimes I do it with the good things. Right. But I can actually write down and celebrate and go back and see, holy shit, like all these great things happen. And I do that for like how I can be better in business, in my relationship. I write good things down for my partner and like say, like why I'm proud of them and and that helps me put a lot of things in perspective, especially when I'm like in a, a, a lower state. Um, and just like little things like that, there, there's tools, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I love that because you have the tools and you're that and you're so, you know, you're pushing through things and, and you manifest and you think of this great energy and you place yourself in these positions. And lately, I mean, I mean, you've been doing some pretty crazy cool things, right? Yeah. From your journey as ambassador for Special Olympics to your journey right now and to acting and in business and, mm -hmm. and doing the health and wellness thing and everything else. Tell me right now, as that's grown, what you're working on and what you're super excited about. Uh, I mean, I, I've got three documentaries. In Let's go. Three sports documentaries in development. Two are going out for pitch shortly. Um, I'm actually flying to film the sizzle for the other one in two weeks. Um, the acting, I love acting it's something i never thought i would do i just got done filming a new movie uh with jonah feingold um in december um got some good auditions now uh you know we're obviously doing some great things mm -hmm. through um uh, in acl and on, on the business side which i'm excited about um 
But I, I think the biggest thing last year was really, really tough because I had to invest in a lot of projects and, and things. Now this year, I know I can execute on them. So I've, I've went above and beyond for protecting my mental health and trying to keep out anything that is going to, you know, kind of create blind right, spots right, because you can't be a visionary if you're right here only like, yes, you'd be focused on it, but you have to clear your mind and clear your space of things that are unhealthy or that are, are distracting you. Um, because I know right now it's, it's my time to, to really, really make a life changing shift in a, in, in a major way. And it's going to change the lives of other people as well. You know, that, that, that life change you're going from, you talk about documentaries and putting them out. You're very passionate about that. You're mm -hmm. very passionate about telling the story. Why? I was I was so afraid to tell my story for so long because I was so worried about being judged or it wouldn't be received. Um, also, the times I did tell my story, people just didn't give a fuck. Fucking dickheads! Or it was because they were so focused on something like superficial or race or this or that. Um, so when this opportunity came, especially, uh, with unique storylines that I felt could help people, I was like, this is a gift that I have. I can't connect with people at the level and the depth that I do and not have a gift to be able to, to present and show some of these stories. And I've got an Academy Award winning production company behind me. UTA is supporting me fully. So we've got three of them, uh, one with Special Olympics, one on the high stakes world of fantasy football, and, uh, the other one. Uh, I can't share yet, but it, uh, it's going to be a good one. We got to get the access agreement signed, um, so I can build those. I have the create the creative. Um, I haven't given that up, and I can protect the integrity of the story, um, while also continuing to work on my craft in front of the lens, right. which makes me a better filmmaker on the other side because I understand script analysis, scripted television, all of these things. So I'm just immersing myself in it entirely, uh, and and this is something that. I'm confident I will have success with. Um, and that's a good feeling because that's that's all I need is what it, it's been a new space. I'm rambling a little bit, but I enjoy talking about this. But I, I had an audition with one of the cast top casting directors in the industry. Mm -hmm. Um, and the response was, you know, you did an amazing job. We love reading with you. We can't wait to, you know, do some more with you. Right. And at that level, they don't say that unless they're serious about right. it. That's all I needed to take this to another level because I'm still new to it. I've got two, two movies under my belt, but I'm still new in the space. Um, but I also am in this space knowing if I work at it the way I do with everything else, I will have success and I will move up that ladder quickly. No, I, I, I think so too. I think, I think hard work and integrity is a lot of it. I think being in the right place at the right time is a lot of it. Mm -hmm. But I think knowing how to act during the right place and right time is all of it. Yeah. That's all of it, right? Yeah. Without that, none of it else matters, right? Because the person who's treating you might not see it, but the people around you will see it. Yeah. When, you know, when you putting this together and seeing all the hard work and all the discipline, man, you're putting in like, and this is one thing I want to tell a lot of people who, who don't understand how success works, man, you're putting in like 20, we're putting 20 hours, 22 hour days. I mean, like crazy days and yeah. then you still have to have a social life and you still have to be friends and you still have to be always on mm -hmm. right and it's a grind and we talked about this when you're walking here like both of us are <laughs> our throat, our yeah, throat yeah. Are sore right we're a little stuffy right it's been like 10 days of just it's running just and running down, and running yeah. and then you're like you told me you're like my body's shutting down i said dude my body's shutting down because at a certain level you just you just can't stop right mm -hmm. but then you see alternative you see the guys who do stop yeah who don't make it who don't want it who don't who don't want to push it through? And I think the only difference is want and desire, right? Yeah. And not self-sabotaging. I think self-sabotage is a major thing. It's crazy. Also, sometimes you can run yourself into the ground, and that is self-sabotage. Oh, I love that one. Breaks. That's true. Because, like, I, I learned this last year. There's seasons, and, like, there were – because of the strike, there were a lot of things I couldn't do, so I shifted right. focus. I've had to do that in relationships. Sometimes there's priority. you got to shift priorities – um, and no one to accelerate because a professional athlete isn't running a hundred miles an hour all the time. Right. They're actually practicing and recovering most of the time. Um, now in business and life, like you got to go obviously, but I think understanding those pulses and when to really turn it on and give yourself a little reprieve, but yeah, like this is the time, like, I don't want to think what if, um, and like, 
I, I've seen so many people, yeah, get complacent and stop, or they don't have the people around them to help lift them up to keep pushing them towards their dreams. Right. Or they're just investing in the wrong shit. Right. You know, that they're not passionate about because you can't go if you if if you're not happy. Right. You know, happiness is everything. And and I think that that creates everything else. When you were playing the league, mm -hmm. who was your hardest hitter? The first time I caught up, uh, we were padded practice in um, Chicago. I came across the middle, and Brian Erlacher took me off my feet. Brian, man. And it was funny because Lack was just like, hey, welcome to Chicago. And like cool, super, like cool cat. Um, I think Lack was, Julius Peppers was there, who was a beast. Um, at that time, special teams was run a little different, so you'd have like the wedge busters and everything. <laughs> the wedge busters, yeah. like guys. Yeah. And then, and then um, but I think like that was like my wake up experience. Right. Uh, Vontae David, uh, who's at Tampa right now, came in as a rookie, but he he flew around in a major major way. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I was around like great guys, and I didn't have like a long stint in the league. You know, it's not like I was like racking up the minutes and stuff like that. But um, I do love that opportunity because I was a basketball player. Right. I love competing. Um, after a certain point when I chose to pivot, like I always wanted to be in film and entertainment. Uh, so after I got released from my last team, I was like, yo, I, I'm, I'm going to just go all in on this. Um, but I'm, I'm thankful that I'm still connected now more with the NFL. I feel like sometimes than even when I was playing, you know, right, right. Because you're doing amazing things, man. Yeah. You're, you're on different shows. You're on different opportunities. Tell me a little about those opportunities that you're on the NFL side. Yeah. So I was uh, covering a lot of the games during season uh, with MSG network. Um, uh, was in talks with Amazon for a couple of different shows. Uh, strike happens, yeah. but um, I'm going to do a lot more covering the games. I want to uh, tap into the lifestyle aspect of athletes more than just what you see on the field. Um, so that's that's kind of goes into that unscripted format. I think Nate Burleson, the way he's built yeah. his career, is sensational. He's such a gifted um, commentator, but he's just a real cool dude who connects with people, and he's, he's a good person. Um, that's always been very, very intriguing to me because I, I feel like you get to show your personality, but you also get to enhance other people's story. I love that, man. You know, as we're wrapping up, man, and you're moving forward, all this stuff, what is one piece of advice that you can give our audience? Just in general? Just in general. Whatever you want to tell the world. Yeah, you know, I think it's important to, to feel emotions. Um, and I'm saying that because, you know, you can you can operate at a level for a long time where you're just like kind of mm -hmm. you know compartmentalizing and stuff but in order to get to that next one you have to have the moments where you're pissed off where you're happy where you're sad where you feel like you want to just yeah freak and freak out because like you're connected and it's so easy to get disconnected in this world because of social media because of different opportunities and like that's one of the greatest things um about the start of this year and you know some difficult times at the end of last year is uh i kind of allowed myself to say yo i need to feel this because some stuff uh sparked memories of my mom when she passed and um I, re I realized how much of that i buried right um and with that i buried a lot of the good moments you know it was mm -hmm. like hard for me to remember her voice remember stories and things and i i remember i was in the living room uh and uh i just broke down crying um in front of my girlfriend because I, I felt so bad and so guilty that i couldn't remember my mom anymore um now fast forward um those emotions and memories came back they were just buried a little deeper but in that time i realized how many things i bury right. um, because i want to be perfect or polished or not offend or be a caretaker but that's not life um no, it so i love that though bro. ask for you know forgiveness later if you lose your cool a little bit but you, you got to feel yeah I, I appreciate that man i feel like a lot of guys especially the guys lately we've been out like that's important yeah because you're, you have to be a certain which way but we're human beings too right yeah. at the end like understanding knowing feeling and just learning because we didn't have the experience it's not like there's a fucking handbook that tells us how to do this stuff mm -hmm. i wish there was there isn't one right yeah but to at least have the balls to deal with it 
mm-hmm. to recognize it, yeah. to want to be better for your kil- your children, dude. Yeah, I love you, man. I'm proud I love of you, you brother, too, bro. Dude. I got fucking chills, man. All my fucking body saying yeah, that. It's it's so so crucial. And the more I don't think I don't think men talk about this enough. Um, but it's it's interesting too because when the conversation does come up, they open up all right? the time. Yeah, and um, uh, the idea of vulnerability, I think they throw it around too much in a PR marketing sense. Way like, too much. Yeah. But being vulnerable is really like some of that messiness, some of that pain, like there's a deeper, deeper level um, rather than just hitting the buzzwords. But in order to do that as well, I think someone has to earn that um, responsibility for you to combat fight in them. Amen. And that also takes a lot for your, someone to get that level of trust. You don't just throw that out. So um, yeah, man, I don't know. We're human. It's amazing, <laughs> We're not man. robots. We're human. We are, man. You know, you know, for David Chen and my Great buddy, Dell. Dell, tell them your social media websites and where you are so people can find yeah. you. Yeah. Hey, uh, check me out on Instagram at Dale Moss13, TikTok, the Dale Moss, um, YouTube, Dale Moss TV, X, Dale Moss. Uh, we're going to be streaming and doing some more things. I got the Twitch going on, um, Dale Moss on Twitch. Uh, but uh, a little, yeah, I don't know. Just Google my name. You can find it somewhere. We're, we're, we're team Dale Mas, man. Dale. Dale, Dale Mas that's for Del Mas. That's my alter ego. Go ahead. That's all there is. Dale, Dale was out Mas. this week. I love my alter ego. I got to share it more on social media. I like Dale. Dale, Dale is fun, man. But for David Chen and my great friend Del Mas, thank you guys. Stay positive, stay true, and just love yourself. Have a good night. We'll talk to you soon. Facts.